Okay, we're ready to start painting and would like to mention the fact I use Lifetone lacquer-based paints. If you're using lacquer-based paints, recommend the use of a respirator and a well-ventilated area. Also, ensure that you don't just let that paint sit there for six months at a time. Every time I go to paint, I pull that lid off and make sure that I've got a little bit of retarder in there along with a little bit of thinner. The better that works, and the better you take care of it, the better it's going to perform for you. So make sure that you don't just ignore the paints. Uh, for an airbrush, I'm using, a, using an Iwata HPBC uh, double action airbrush. Whatever airbrush you can get to work for you should work. I'm not a brand specific person, I just happen to like this one and it does perform well. Now our goal as we paint this lip line, we're going to go along and our, what we're trying to do is put fleshy tones under the fur and in order to do that, you have to adjust your airbrush so that the direction those hairs are sticking out, you want to be shooting that paint basically in between those hairs. And don't worry too much about getting, getting paint on the, the fur itself. We will be coming back through and wiping that paint off of the fur. And the color that I'm using is a dusty pink life tone color and we'll actually tone it down just a little bit with dark brown. It may look a little strong now but once we pull it off the hair it'll give us a nice fleshy color through the hair itself. Okay, work our way up to the eye. Obviously with a drop tine buck it's a little more work because we've got a slight obstruction in the way. And try to get a nice uniform color. Once again we're going to come in and pull a bunch of this paint off of the hair, so don't worry about the overspray right now. Another nice thing about fleshing out your animal is it can show you any of the problems that you might not have been able to see with the dark colors that are on the epidermal portion of the skin. It might clue you into a few repairs that you might have to make because any little flaw will show itself once you start getting that flesh tone applied. And lighting is critical. Now what I like to use when I'm working inside the ears is a regulator pin and that allows me to hold out hold that hair out and as far as the ears go use your reference I've seen ears that after a buck's been killed and I've walked up in it and I've looked in his ear it's almost pure white and I think the reason I like to use the fleshy color is that initially this yellowish uh, brown color that you get from a commercially tanned skin or one that you tan just looks dead so the reason we're coming in here and adding a little bit of color is to give life to it and the color of pink is actually a lot of times the sunlight coming through that ear and showing some of the blood that's in there which will give you a little bit of a fleshy appearance. So just try not to make them too bright. And I like to just knock down a little bit of that dead brownish color and give it a little bit of life with a little fleshy tone. The goal is to get it to where it looks as natural as possible and that's where close attention to the references comes into play. Now we're just finishing up with a little bit of flesh on the inside of that ear and the next step and you'll notice I'm wearing a headlamp because down inside that inner ear it's a little bit hungry for light and we'll take and switch from a dusty pink to a pure white and you can actually go if you want to mix up a special batch just for the inside of the ears. You can go with a pure white with a few drops of dusty pink or flesh 
I like to transition into the inner ear detail to more of a white. If you look at reference or a live deer, it's actually almost a waxy white appearance. And we'll tone this flesh down just a little bit with white. And once again, don't worry about a little overspray. We will be going back through and toning everything down and brushing it off with a brush. And don't be afraid to turn that light off once you start coming out of the darkness of that inner ear and see what the natural light's doing to it. Because a lot of times if you go with too much light, you can tend to overpaint it. And then as soon as you turn those lights off, it might seem a little bit too bright. And I'm just going along here and anywhere that I see a little bit of brown skin, we're going to take and lighten that up with some white. And we're ready to start cleaning hairs. Now before we start wiping the hairs off, I'm going to take a little bit of dark brown and just barely missed it and tone that flesh color down just a little bit over the lip. Now we'll come in with a terry cloth towel and the goal here is to not remove every bit of paint that we've got in here. It's just to clean those hairs off. I kind of like to go in a little bit of a circular pattern. And you may have to give this a few more applications before you're satisfied. The goal is to get this hair once it's all back combed on the chin and the muzzle area when you look at that, you should be able to look a little bit closer, and the closer you get, you should be able to see flesh down through the, the center of that hair. And we'll spend several minutes going through and making sure that we've got every bit of paint off of the hair because that is one category on the NTA score sheet that you will get dinged for if you don't clean them. Okay, we're to the point now where we've gone through and we've cleaned all the hair off the, or all the paint off the hair on both the ear, around the eye, on the muzzle. At this point in time, you may want to determine whether or not you have to reapply flesh because sometimes as you go through and pull that paint off of the hair, you may also end up taking a little bit of paint off with it. And if that's the case, go through, repaint it, uh, clean it off until you're satisfied with the amount of flesh tone that you have down you're looking through that hair. And the next step that we'll go on to is this magic sculpt on the inside of the nose and around the eyes. We're gonna start with the tear duct and we've got just a slight opening right here in that tear duct. We're gonna use magic sculpt number of different sculpting epoxies that are out there. My personal favorite happens to be Magic Sculpt, so whatever you decide to use. The color that I'm going to start with is a natural color, which is an almost white color. And the reason I use that is that as you get down inside of that tear duct, the epidermal color will actually stop right at the beginning of that tear duct. And as you go down into it, uh, it tends to turn more of a white color. And I'm not per se going to just fill it I'm actually going to give it a crease down in there and block it off just a little bit. Now the goal is in a competition piece to use as little sculpting epoxy as you can possibly get away with. This is being mixed in a one to one ratio. And I prefer with my modeling tools, a lot of times before I start doing the finish work, I like to hit my modeling tools with a little piece of sandpaper. The smoother that modeling tool is, the better off you'll be. It seems like the magic sculpt doesn't stick to the modeling tool if you take and sand it a little bit before you get started. The goal is to make this look like it's two pieces of skin that are coming together without being fused together.